Welcome back to another instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week, where in this video I will be talking about the Royal Spoonbill, the only representative of its kind in the country and a group with fabulous head plumage. I hope you enjoy. Royal Spoonbills are tall, white birds with black faces and legs, measuring around 77cm long from their bill tip to tail, and getting up to 2kg in weight. They are most similar in appearance to the similar yellow-billed spoonbill, which is a vagrant and thus rarer, as well as the white heron, which are taller and thinner, with a distinctive slender bright yellow bill. As wading birds, they feed in the water, repeatedly scything through their environment with their specialised spoon-shaped bills in an arc, mainly feeding in fresh water and tidal flat habitats. Their bills are especially useful in detecting prey, as they possess vibration detectors that can allow them to quickly identify where food is, so they can quickly shut their bills and then feed. Their prey list consists mainly of fish and other crustaceans, but they will also eat insects or frogs if the circumstances are right, although their bill structure limits them to feeding in water that is less than 40cm deep over sand, mud or clay. They are closely related to Old World Ibises, and are notable in New Zealand for being the only one of their kind out of the six worldwide to breed in the country. They are actually self-introduced, with them being first recorded in New Zealand flying from Australia at Castle Point in 1861, with sightings increasing through the 1900s, with breeding first being recorded in South Westland in 1949. They have since successfully colonised New Zealand from Australia, and are now widespread, breeding at multiple sites on both of the main islands, with their population from 1977 being estimated as around 52 birds, and now being around 2,360 from the most recent estimate done in 2012. During the breeding season, birds grow long white plumes from the back of their heads, as well as colour patches appearing on the face, with the former being used for courtship displays and can be up to 20cm long in males. They breed in the exposed canopies of tall trees, as well as on the ground near estuaries and harbours, with males sparring more often than females, extending their necks with bills agape and then jabbing or wing flapping to fend off rivals. Once a pair is established, they create a bowl-shaped nest of sticks in which the females lay two or three eggs, after which the chicks hatch after about 21 days, and then fledge after seven weeks, although they are often fed by their parents after doing so. While they have been able to colonise New Zealand, a new landmass, which is quite a big feat for a species to do so, they are still vulnerable to many things. Birds are most at risk from disturbance during the breeding season, which they are highly sensitive to, with whole colonies in Australia being known to desert their eggs after the most minor of upsets, especially when development and recreational activities are going on on nearly any scale. Thankfully, they do have a fairly broad range overseas, and as such are classified as least concern overall, although in New Zealand they are classified as naturally uncommon, but are increasing overall. And with that, I thank you for watching this instalment of New Zealand Bird of the Week. For next time, you are now able to vote for the White Fronted Tern, which being the most common tern on the New Zealand coastline are fairly typical seabirds. With that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.